Well, hey everybody, Matt here, and uh, pretty cool stuff. So, so what I'm showing you, I literally downloaded like 10 minutes ago. Seriously, I, I just got it off of the server, and I wanted to do a video because um, it's pretty cool. It's the first time I'm really seeing all this stuff in action, a lot of the filters. So up until now, I've had a little window that I could open up a raw file for on one photo raw, um, and just kind of test like exposure and shadows and highlights and clarity and stuff. But this, I'm actually able to, to get in here and actually see a lot of different filters, um, get into the mix and a lot of stuff that I use over and over and to see it working on a, this is a 36 megapixel raw photo. Okay, so this is no no smoke and mirrors, no small JPEG. This is 36 megapixel raw photo that's open right now on a large screen. So it's pushing a lot of pixels through onto a big screen. Um, but you're looking at this kind of, this is what the developers and, and the engineers use as a little test center here. It's got a lot of weird names on labels like X axis and Y axis and stuff that doesn't mean anything to me. But you know what I've learned from teaching photography? A lot of the audience out there is software developers, so you actually know what that techie stuff means. Um, I digress. Let's take a look here. So what's a good one here? Let's go to, how about Gaussian Blur? Uh, Gaussian Blur is a cool one, oldie but goodie from Photoshop. Look how fast that is. So it's pretty much real time. I mean, it's smooth, it's fluid, it's fast. Again, working on a 36 megapixel raw file, you're not waiting for you know a slider or anything, uh, a little progress bar to go through to, to make the changes. Um, barrel distortion is another one. So we talk about lens corrections being put in. So you can see kind of the early stages of that happening here with, uh, with barrel distortion. But again, it's, it's pretty much real time as I move the slider. So real important because a lot of that work um, from what I understand, I'm not real techie with this stuff, but it's being pushed through to the graphics processor, which enables, I guess, you know, if you think of it this way, future growth, you know, our raw files are not getting smaller, they're getting bigger. So if you're building for a raw file for today in five years, what happens is, is, is they get bigger and then everything starts to slow down. So when you start to move things to that graphics processor, um, it starts to handle the growth in the, that file size a lot better. Another one, this one is, is, is near and dear to my heart. It's called Clarity Progressive right now, which is definitely an engineering term. Uh, it is, you'll know it as dynamic contrast. So there's the small details, medium, but I mean, seriously, look at that real time. Like it's working as fast as, as it can be. So really cool stuff there. Uh, what's another one here? So lens blur, let's go in here to, uh, to lens blur. This is more kind of, reflective of if you were gonna go in and try to add um, a fake depth of feel to your photo. This is what that radius is in lens blur. Okay, again, super, super fast. And then what you'll notice is you can even start to stack things, um, which, you know, if you're an on one effects user, we could always stack our filters on top of each other. So I can do, um, you know, I'll add some dynamic contrast and then I can add some, I'll go over here to lens blur. I can go over to, let's say, tone enhancer, and I can start adding these filters on top of each other. And what's cool about it, especially if you're a, a seasoned effects user, is you'll know that if, if you ever added filter layers on top of each other, if you wanted to edit the bottom one, you'd have to turn all the other ones off, or if you wanted to add anything in between here, but you don't have to do that here. As I edit these, nothing, nothing gets turned on and off in these other filter layers, so it's still really fast, and it's still, you're seeing the results of every single filter stacked on top of each other. So really, really cool stuff. I wanted to do a quick video for you because uh, for me, this is the first time I've been able to, to see a lot of these filters that I use all the time um, kind of put together in, in a raw workflow working on a native raw file. So stay tuned. Uh, as more stuff comes out, I'll make sure I do some videos here for you. And that way, uh, just keep you updated on the progress of everything. Thanks for giving me a couple of minutes. And uh, I'll talk to you again real soon.